in the American League, New York and Boston. It was a great night to be a New York fan because in the Garden, Earl Barron was dropping 17 points and 18 rebounds, and the Knicks beat the Celtics. And then the Yankees beat the Red Sox 6-4. And a guy that stood out to me is Robinson Cano. He usually gets off to a slow start. Right now, this guy, this second baseman is off to a torrid start. He had a home run yesterday, three RBIs in two games. You're going to stop talking. Is he going to break out or what? <laughs> well, <laughs> he's coming from you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's hitting fifth in the lineup, and if you're hitting behind A-Rod and Teixeira, you're going to get a lot of RBI opportunities. How old is Robinson Cano? He's third in his – oh, he's 27. That's right. Yeah, you know yeah. what? I can't say the, the number right because I'm not allowed to anymore, but Robinson Cano is reaching his prime. He's going to have a career year. I've already said that, though. It's a, Al, mu- you it's a and multiple I have to of say, nine. That's how he's going to say it now. It's a multiple of nine. You and I have to say 27 for him. Uh, from now on. But what, what are your thoughts? What were your thoughts coming into the season on Cano? Uh, Cano, that uh, was a big believer uh, that I think uh, among AL second baseman, he's right there amongst that cluster at the top. So he's not going to break out because he's uh, last year he's already proven that he's there among the elite in the AL. So, uh, yeah, no, he's uh, one of the top guys in the AL. Any other thoughts from the Yankees-Red Sox game? Well, you got, it was you like got Victor Martinez well. hitting his first homer this season. Uh, tremendous power there. You're going to obviously start him in all leagues. But Alfredo Aceves, how important is he to the Yankees pitching staff? If they get a bad start from Burnett, Aceves is a guy that can shut you down. He's going to bridge that gap to uh, Chamberlain, who was also outstanding. These guys are valuable in deeper leagues as uh, middle relievers. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought Aceves up because he is one of those rare middle relievers who on a regular basis pitches multiple innings and does so very effectively. So, yeah, in deeper leagues, uh, AL-only leagues, that guy uh, can really be helpful when you're reaching for that uh, last reliever on your roster. Unless they're bad spring, bad first start, but don't worry about it. He's going to be fine. Yeah. Subpar starts for Burnett and for Lester. Each of them went five innings. Each of them gave up four runs. Only three earned, though, for Burnett. But, you know, Yankees, Red Sox, just not good for starting pitching. How many pitches were thrown yesterday? 333 pitches. I mean, it's ridiculous. The game started around 7-10. Ended at about 11, and it was a 10-run game and a 9-inning game. And I already watched, lost twice by the time that game was <laughs> I'm even getting a little bit tired of uh, these Yankees-Red Sox games. Uh, moving on to Oakland and Seattle. Oakland gets a walk-off win in the 10th. They beat the Mariners 2-1. to one. Mark Ellis gets the game-winning hit. Good starting pitching here, and I think you guys probably would want to talk about Dallas Braden because he had 10 Ks and one walk in seven innings of one-run ball. Braden is a guy that I've really liked the last couple of years, just kept waiting for him to, to do in the major leagues what he had done in the minors, and then he developed this ankle problem last year. And, and then th- this spring when I was reading that he had no feeling in his one foot and uh, that that was likely to be the case for the rest of his life, that really worried me. How do you how do you get the feel <laughs> on the mound when you've got a numb foot? Uh, obviously, he's put those concerns to rest uh, with this start. So uh, you know, I think this could, this could be that year that we're waiting for from, from Dallas Braden. With the starts of the Mariners and A's, it reminds me in the pitching planner every week to start every pitcher against these two scrub offenses. So does that kind of take away from the excitement that you might have about Braden? Braden and Snell. Both pitch very well, and I think you know they just were a benefit of a favorable matchup. Seattle and Oakland obviously was not the most exciting game. Does anything else stand out to you? Nope. I know I'll, uh, <laughs> you're, you're wondering about some of the reliefs pitching strategy there. Yeah, um, yeah, I was really surprised to see in the box box score that they uh, brought in this Rule Five pick uh, to share, uh, not Mark. Uh, yeah. And I'm not uh, not uh, sure about the first name Kanakoa. I'm I'm going to guess here. Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> uh, supposedly a relative of Shane Victorino's uh, from from Maui, but uh, yeah, not a guy that I expected to see in the ninth and tenth inning there. So I'm wondering what's up there, and I'm sure they just didn't want to use Ardsma on consecutive nights, but uh, you know why not? Uh, maybe slot him in a middle inning, mini, middle inning, excuse me, and bring somebody, you know, like uh, Kelly or Lowe in later. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a curious decision. The score was tied. Well, but still, you know, in a, in a tie situation to bring your rule five gate guy in week one, seems like a... You don't bring him in, in Oakland's at home. You don't bring him in the bottom of the inning. It's pretty basic. Well, Next. no, no. But, I mean, if you look at how the Padres used their rule five reliever last year, uh, Perdomo, um, they always put him in the lowest leverage uh, situations possible. Next. Um, Fantasy. Let's well, go. let me ask you real quick. Dallas <laughs> Braden and Ian Snell, are these guys available in a lot of leagues? Uh, yes, I think many leagues. And I think everybody's going to jump on them. But I'm warning you, they, they pitched against the Mariners and A's. Fair so, enough. So if you, want, if you want to get a sleeper, find the next people pick, pitching against the Mariners and A's. Yeah, the good news is Oakland and the, and the Mariners are going to play a bunch this year. Tampa, Tampa Bay also gets a walk-off win. The Rays beat the Orioles 4-3. to three. Now, these two teams, we knew they had intriguing closers. <laughs> 
coming into the season, to say the least. Especially they were for, intriguing. For yeah, I think so. For the Orioles, you had Mike Gonzalez who blew the. Everyone game. was hating him in spring training, and now they hate yeah. him even more. But that's what now I'm his saying. Velocity was 93 right. um, in his first strikeout with Pat Burrell. So velocity wasn't the problem. He just completely. Uh, uh, imploded, but you know what? With this, the bad ball clubs. I hate closers on bad teams. I know some people, you know, love the Sorius because he's got a great arm, but it's Gonzalez. It's a bad team. It's a mediocre closer on a bad team. I, I won't worry about him in mixed leagues. You shouldn't be starting him, unless really deep road history leagues where anybody who gets the save matters. What about uh, for Tampa Bay, though? They bring in a new closer, and Rafael Soriano did I not like exactly it. pitch well. That's, it's funny because I actually was, was watching this game last night, and they brought him in, and I thought this is exciting because Soriano's finally going to get his chance to be the sole closer. He and Gonzalez split the, the duties last year in Atlanta. Uh, so I thought, how exciting. And then he went out and really got himself into a jam, yeah. got out of it, but both closers look pretty bad. Uh, but uh, you know, I still think Soriano, uh, as long as he can stay healthy, that's my bigger concern. Uh, I think he's going to be – terrific. I think he's going to be uh, an elite closer. And I think that the Rays team is going to be outstanding. I think Soriano is going to get a lot of safe chances. Um, you know, maybe even 35 saves if he can stay healthy. He kind of needs uh, J.P. Howell to get healthy. It might not happen until May at this point. Um, having that that uh, solid setup man to get to bridge the gap really helps the closer. But, um, you know, I'm liking Soriano. If he's available in your mixed league, you should pick him up. And then the uh, Orioles batting lineup, I, I like the uh, Adam Jones, the breakout of the first half of right. last year. Struggled in the second half, but comes out and hits a homer in his first game. I like to see that. 25 homers, 25 steals perhaps. Matt Wieters, that guy that you probably had to reach to get, hitting a home run uh, off the bat. I like I like to see that. And then Sean Rodriguez started at second base. That means Ben Zobrist is probably the regular right fielder. Uh, Reed Brignac's probably um, the backup second baseman. And Rodriguez will serve that uh, role that Zobra served last year playing second base and right field just like we said all spring in these podcasts Rodriguez is a huge breakout candidate tremendous power I know he struck out twice um, but you have to like Sean Rodriguez starting on opening day and getting regular bats and Deona Navarro there were three catcher uh, combinations uh, that I was watching yesterday and opening day on Monday um, Rob Johnson's versus Adam Moore Johnson got those starts uh, Jeff Mathis versus Mike Napoli and Mathis got those starts. And then Navarro versus Shopik, and Navarro gets the start. So those those are very interesting timeshares for fantasy people because they want these guys active in mixed leagues. Um, but among all of those, uh, Napoli is probably the guy I would value the most, uh -huh. and he hasn't even started yet. Okay. Uh, well, speaking of Napoli, the Angels and the Twins, and this is a good – uh, another another one where we can talk about closers because John Roush got the one two three ninth inning last night got the save and well first of all you Mac I know that we were talking about Mac Career yeah I like Career and you know, uh, what happened he, there? the problem is you know they were so he, he's kind of in that pitch twenty two pitch twenty two is like the catch twenty two of pitchers where That's you're very clever. you're good enough. <laughs> You're good enough to start, but you're too valuable in relief. But he's in the pitch 22 of closers where he's good enough to close, but he's so valuable as a setup man. He led all of baseball in uh, holds last year. They're giving the, the job to Roush out of the uh, – out of the gate here. I think Guerrero could elevate to the close, but Roush looked so good last night. Um, there's no reason to expect that anytime soon. I think Roush is a must-own in mixed leagues. The Twins are a team that plays pitching and defense. They win a lot of close games. Roush is going to get a lot, a lot of save opportunities out of the gate, and I think he's a must-start. Al, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Roush. He's not exactly a hard thrower. He doesn't look like uh, the... He doesn't look like the kind of guy who's going to be one of the best closers in the league. What do you think? Yeah, no, he's not going to be one of the best closers in the league, but he's going to be pretty good, and he's going to he's going to be good enough to keep that job, uh, even though he does have some competition from from Guerrier and and uh, some of the other setup core. But uh, he they they made the right choice in giving him the job because he he does have the nice blend of of having just enough strikeout dominance uh, and very good control that uh, you know he should not have problems. Home and Nick, runs. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Amen. Oh, Nick Blackburn had the start that I was hoping Scott Baker would have in our little bit, uh, <laughs> right? With Malcolm. More, more to come um, on that with the. But two Blackburn's start a guy that uh, you know didn't throw a whole lot of strikes, and, and surprising because the yeah. Twins pitchers are guys that throw strikes, and he struggled with walks, but he pitched well enough to win. And I think it's going to be that way with the Twins pitching staff. There's no one really exciting unless you're really, really high on Francisco Liriano, their fifth starter. Um, in their rotation, but because they're more of like pitch to contact pitchers. Yeah. But these guys can be big winners because this team's going to win a lot of games. Why? Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau came out of the gate swinging, both hit homers. 
um, they're going to be a very, very good team. In fact, I, I picked them to win that division and to win actually the AL.